Good morning, my name is Richard Lancaster and I'm a member of the Greenpeace Environmental Organisation and I'd like to thank the teachers at Cotton School for giving me the opportunity to talk to you this morning about a subject which I'm very passionate about. Um, I'd like to start by showing you a picture of somebody and I wonder if any of you recognise who this is. I wouldn't be at all surprised if you don't because he's not widely known but it's arguable that he has had a huge influence on the world that we now live in. And that's because his name is Dr Leo Hendrik Bakeland. Back in 1909 he invented the very first plastic and he called it Bakelite in a rather immodest move naming it after himself. Now Dr Bakeland had worked out a way of taking thick black oil and turning it into plastic pellets and this process means that we can now produce all of the things that we're used to having made out of plastic and of course plastic is everywhere and plastic is a very very good material for making lots of things for instance the pipes in the road outside your house which carry the water and the gas and protect the electricity wires are all made out of plastic very durable, lasts forever so that there's no maintenance. And of course plastic is widely used in consumer goods, things like hair dryers, vacuum cleaners and uh, televisions and radios, all these sorts of things, things that can be moulded into special shapes, they're light, they're durable. So plastic is an ideal material for that sort of thing. But the third thing that we use plastic for is it's now widely used in packaging and a lot of it is used for food packaging. And you can see in the bottom photograph that we've got plastic bottles and food containers all made out of plastic. Now, when Dr. Bakelin invented plastic in 1909 there was only one type of plastic, Bakelite, and it took many years for plastic production to ramp up. And it wasn't until the 1950s that it started to become more and more popular. And as you can see on this graph, the growth has been exponential. So that by 2050, we are going to have a phenomenal, unbelievable amount of, of plastic in the world. The problem is that we're using the plastic, which is durable and lasts forever, for things that we only need to last a few days. And here's an example, a plastic, transparent plastic box containing tomatoes. And of course, immediately the tomatoes are eaten, we're left with plastic which we can't do anything with. And that's called single use or disposable plastic. And the trouble is that some of the plastic is now just used when it's not needed. It's really bad. And we've got some examples here. Some really daft packaging, bananas, a single banana in a polystyrene shrink pack, a couple of peeled bananas shrink wrapped, four apples in a plastic tube, a peeled orange in a plastic box, a cauliflower in a plastic box, and as a special treat for Valentine's Day, individual shrink wrapped strawberries. The problem is it's very difficult to avoid all this plastic. If you go into a supermarket, they wrap practically everything in plastic these days, as you can see on this photograph. And in fact, the, work, the problem is worse in some other countries. In developing countries, it's quite often it's the case that people can't afford to buy in bulk. So whereas we'd buy a large plastic bottle of shampoo, for instance, over there, they'll go and buy a plastic sachet of shampoo, just enough to shampoo their hair one day. Or to do the washing, they'll buy washing powder in a sachet. And then the following week, they'll go back and buy another sachet. And of course, all of those sachets are not recycled, they're just thrown away. And in fact, it's estimated that something like 2 billion people worldwide have no proper rubbish or recycling collections. That's about a third of the world's population. And in this video, you can see the results of that. It's quite common to just dump rubbish wherever they can. And in this case, it's into a river. So, plastic lasts forever. It's actually estimated that there are now something like 8.3 billion tonnes of plastic in the world. 
Now, some of that plastic has been recycled, about 9%. About 12% has been incinerated, i.e. burnt. But about 79% has ended up either in landfills, i.e. on rubbish tips, or elsewhere in the environment. And the trouble is, for that plastic that's in the environment, it just lasts forever. And what happens is that very often it ends up in the oceans. One way that it ends up in the oceans is people chuck it as litter, and the litter gets blown into storm drains, and then it gets washed out via rivers to the sea. Another way is down the plug hole, through microfibers, little plastic fibers leaching off clothes when you wash them. And the third way is from landfill sites. Landfill sites near the coast or near rivers, strong wind blows up and the plastic just gets blown around and blown into the rivers and out into the oceans. And in fact, the current COVID-19 pandemic has made this situation a lot worse because what's happening is that a large amount of PPE, personal protective equipment, that's masks and gloves and other things, are being generated and not being disposed of correctly. And as this video now shows, a lot of it is ending up in the ocean. We have the coronavirus and all these masks are now washing up on the beaches. That was in February, and that was a, a far-flung beach. I mean, it was nowhere near the city. And then since then, we've obviously gone to other beaches nearer the city, and we're seeing masks washing up. So it's June the 1st here in Hong Kong, and uh, come down the beach, we're still finding lots of these. There was so much of this people all over the foreshore. I stopped counting, it's around 15, uh, but there were plenty going off into the distance. It's important to understand we had a tremendously grave crisis before the pandemic even started in terms of uh, plastic waste in the ocean. And now you take the global pandemic. At the current rate, we're putting 129 billion, and I'm saying billion, face masks into the environment every single month. 65 billion plastic gloves into the environment every single month. A significant portion of those will be disposed of improperly and will wind up in the ocean. The glove or the mask that you take off and you casually disregard because you think it was safe for that day could easily be the glove or the mask that kills a whale. So understand that, that the simple human act of indifference or of safety may have a tremendously deleterious effect on the other end. So, that shows what's happening to a lot of this PPE equipment. And the problem is that when that plastic washes out to sea, very often it looks like uh, food to the wildlife. So you can see a bird here trying to have a peck at a plastic bottle and a turtle that's uh, thinking that this plastic bag is actually a jellyfish and is trying to eat it. And the ironic thing is that many of those disposal masks and gloves are unnecessary because recent research by the Wake Forest Institute of Regenerative Medicine has found that homemade cloth masks are as good or even better than surgical masks. And as for the gloves, well, for most of us, just washing our hands often and frequently is a better protection than trying to wear disposable gloves. So that's the solution to part of that problem. The other thing is that it is important to recycle. So if the plastic can be recycled, it's important to put it in the recycling and then it can be made into new products, clothing, trainers, plastic spoons, even garden furniture. But recycling won't solve the problem 
because this photograph shows you the whopping pile of plastic bottles that's just one day's recycling collection from Bristol. And the truth of the matter that recycling is a dirty, labour-intensive and imperfect process. There's just too much of it and a lot of it can't be recycled. So we need to address the problem in a different way. And a third problem with recycling is that not everything can be recycled as often. So for instance, aluminium cans, glass bottles, steel cans can be recycled indefinitely. Newsprint can be recycled four to six times, but plastic has a limited number of times it can be recycled. Your nice clear plastic bottle gets recycled first of all as a coloured bottle and after a few times around the system it will eventually end up as just a black, black rubbish bag and will end up in landfill. So if you had a plastic bottle of water every week, then at the end of the week, effectively, that bottle would end up as landfill, no matter how good you were at putting it in the recycling. And of course, the problem also is that not everyone is keen on reducing the amount of plastic. In fact, the oil companies, having seen the drop in demand for oil because of less flights, um, and more renewable energy are looking for other outlets for our oil and of course plastic is one of them so oil companies are looking to make more plastic to stave off the losses from the fuel demands and of course they're interested in that because just look at this a bottle of water to produce a one litre bottle of water it takes three litres of water and 0.2 litres of oil and of course it produces 0.1 kilograms of CO2 emissions. So bottled water is banned for the environment in all sorts of ways. So we really need to just simply reduce the amount of plastic. And one way of doing that is to look for alternatives. Taking a steel or a hard plastic reusable water bottle with us and looking out for that refill symbol to get it topped up when we're out and about taking our own bag shopping, our keep cup for our tea and coffee, saying no to plastic straws, having our milk delivered in glass milk bottles, using bars of soap rather than liquid soap, and using loose leaf tea rather than the tea bags which also contain plastic. And if you have got a sweet tooth and you really do want that fizzy drink, it's much better to choose a glass bottle or an aluminium can because those can be properly recycled indefinitely. But the other thing is to seek out places where you can buy stuff that it isn't already wrapped in plastic. Places like this, I live in Dalesey and there we have a shop called Simply Green which is a zero waste shop. You take your own containers and fill them up so that there's literally no plastic wastage. And looking for greengrocers, this again is in the greengrocers in Nailsey where a lot of the fruit and veg is loose rather than pre-wrapped in plastic. And if you want to find out what your own plastic footprint is, you can go to the Greenpeace website where there's uh, the opportunity to go through a little question and answer to check what your own impact via the amount of plastic you use. But of course check with your parents or carers before you access the internet. So that's, uh, that's the end of this short talk. Thank you for watching and I hope I've given you a few ideas about how you might be able to reduce your own plastic footprint. Thank you.